G'day and welcome back to the Good Food and Wine Show in Melbourne. I'm here with Matt Skinner, which, look, a lot of you out there would well and truly know Matt. He's got a history with grapes that dates back, well, certainly a lot longer than me. Uh, you know, hangs out with his good mate Toby Puddock and his good mate Jamie Oliver fairly regularly. A lot of you would know his books as well. We've talked about, what is it, the, the most recent one is the... Heard it through the grapevine. Yeah. There so, you go. So tell us quickly about that one. Heard it through the grapevine is a no-nonsense uh, approach to buying, drinking, wine and food matching, all the kind of little bits and pieces you need to know in order to get more out of your wine. If you're, you know, it doesn't, it's not really, someone asked me the other day, what's the age group? And it's not really an age group, it's more a way of thinking about wine. And if you're one of those people that sort of know enough to know what you like, you want to know a little bit more, you want to take some more steps with it, your time poor... You know, it's, it, it's the book for you to get. Well, that's certainly a lot of you out there. We know that. There's so many of you out there love your wine but want to know more about it. And that's perfect. Now, as we're talking about learning more about wine, let's talk a little bit about where Australia is at at the moment because there's a lot of press out there that says Australia is really suffering. A, there's a wine glut and there's a bit of a perception problem. Are those things true to you? Yeah, I think perhaps not so much the glut now, but the perception problem for sure. I think, you know, I lived, I was part of the UK wine industry for six years and I got to see it sort of firsthand. I got to see, I guess, the tail end of the boom and then I got to see the beginning of the of the downturn. And, um, yeah, it, it's, it's really tough. It's probably the toughest time in the industry, you know, uh, well, in the modern wine industry in Australia. I, I don't think we've been through a... The last time I can remember like this is probably the early 90s, you know, with with sort of recession. And, um, you know, I, th- I think uh, it's, it's an image crisis that we need to turn around. Having been, as I said, having lived in that market in the UK, I think what Australia exports versus what it produces are two totally different things. And I think what we need to do is communicate better what it is that we do here. Because as we all know, those of us that live in Australia... This is, a, this is an incredible home to a, a broad, broad range of styles, of varieties, of regions, of producers, and we're not complacent. Attention, please. Attention, please. Should we wait for her? The we should. The wine show will close in five minutes. That's, you know, that's... Well, visitors, please make their way to the nearest exit. Uh, thank you. Well, that's tr- just, that's, and that's thank just... you for visiting the Good Food and Wine Show. The it's... show will reopen tomorrow from 10 a.m. There you go. They're trying to get rid of us, but not before we, we at finish least this story. Knows you're not duping them into like just being on a set. You know, this no. is actually the good food and wine show. It's not just virtual. Getting back to it, you know, look for me. Um, you know, we're we're home to an astonishing range of producers, of varieties of styles, of regions, and of diversity. And I think um, we need to better communicate that to the rest of the world. And the wheels are in motion through Wine Australia and the Australian Wine and Branding Corporation to kind of make that happen. It's going to take time, though. And I think there's been fair bit of damage done over the last you know the the last 18 months and it's going to take some time to repair that yeah we'll get there so yeah i guess that's the next question is 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 the industry set up now to get us out of the the little dip in the valley that we're in yeah i think it is i i really think it is but i think it's probably the reaction time's probably been perhaps a bit slower than it could have been we should have been thinking about this some time ago and instead i mean you know like you look back three decades and we we build our reputation off the back of wines that were clean, they were well made, they've been accused of being a bit clinical. We, we bought technology to, you know, to a number of wine producing countries around the world. Uh, our wines, they escaped the regional red tape that kind of governed a lot of European wines. Um, you know, they were easy to understand, they were easy to drink. Um, some people have called them sunshine in a bottle and... and to that end, we were sort of selling the dream and living it at the same time, I think, in the Australian wine industry. And while we were busy living it, perhaps we should have been kind of thinking about, you know, forward planning and what was what was going to happen down the track and diversification and, and, and going out into new styles, new varieties and, and taking it to the next sort of stage. And, you know, and I think that was 1990 and I think circa 2010, it's a wildly different landscape in the wine industry followers became leaders you know you got like um the rise of south america um we've seen we've seen all kind of different factors come into play and i think consumer tastes have changed as well and they've really moved away from those sun-soaked flavors of australian wine that perhaps we were producing 20 30 years ago but you know like i've been really um buoyed on by the fact that there's been uh you know a, a bit of a the rise of alternative varieties in australia the fact that there seems to be now 
more than ever before and there's no logical explanation for it but there seems to be a whole new generation of producers who are sort of chomping at the bit to try new things to experiment with new styles even with traditional varieties that we've kind of known in Australia doing new things like backing off on oak reducing alcohol levels whether it's whole bunch you know like wild yeast there's lots of stuff that's happening that's exciting and from a diverse range of climatic and regional variation yeah. look this probably leads me on to actually saying to Matt can we grab you one day maybe you'll get down to Match Bar in Melbourne and we'll talk about some of these wines specifically we'll stick them in some glasses and we'll talk about them yeah we'd love to definitely right. anyhow that's it from the Good Food and Wine Show thanks to Matt we'll see you all later cheers